things were already not looking good for Donald Trump this summer. The FBI's search of his Florida home in August uncovered troves of evidence that the former president might have been unlawfully storing top-secret documents he illegally took from the White House. That, coupled with the Justice Department's ongoing investigation into Trump's coup plot, had a lot of people believing a federal indictment was imminently on its way. But Attorney General Merrick Garland had an issue on the horizon, the midterms. Weeks after the Mar-a-Lago search, Bloomberg reported that the DOJ would hold off on issuing any indictment of Trump until after the midterm elections. The Justice Department has a policy on the books that says prosecutors should avoid filing charges that might be perceived as interfering in an election, typically within 60 days of Election Day. That grace period has, of course, now ended. But Trump is, once again, a candidate for president. So how does that play into the DOJ's thinking? Well, both the AP and The Washington Post are reporting that the Justice Department is proceeding with their criminal investigations, regardless of Trump's 2024 ambitions. The Post reporting that DOJ officials have even discussed the possibility of appointing a special counsel to assure impartiality in the Trump probes. Joining me now to discuss all of this is MSNBC legal analyst Joyce Vance. She's also a law professor at the, Univers the University of Alabama, excuse me, and a former United States attorney. Joyce, my friend, had to have you on. Midterms are over. So let's start with Donald Trump's announcement on Tuesday. Let's clear up any confusion that might still exist. What, if any, impact will that announcement have on the Justice Department's ability to indict Donald Trump? It will have no impact on DOJ's ability or on DOJ's consideration here. Merrick Garland has repeatedly said that he pursues investigations without fear and without favor. I take him at face value when he says that. He means that. He's an institutionalist at heart. Many people have been unhappy about his belief in the institutions, but now we see why that matters. His belief that he should pursue cases to their logical end, regardless of who the targets may be and whether or not they may be running for high office. You know, Joyce, I began something on my Twitter feed called <laughs> Indictment Watch. Um, from what we currently know, and I wanted to ask you, which DOJ investigation has the best chance of resulting in charges against Donald Trump, the Mar-a-Lago documents case, or the Fulton County investigation? Um, so, Katie, I'm not sure if my crystal ball is quite that good, but, but let me say just this. As between the two DOJ investigations, the Mar-a-Lago case is less complicated. There are fewer moving parts, fewer players, and the charges themselves are fairly streamlined. We don't know for certain that DOJ will indict, and it's important to recognize that DOJ has far more information and evidence available to it than what's in the public record. But based on the publicly available information, it seems rather clear that Trump not only retained materials he was not entitled to have, that he obstructed the investigation. That looks like the straight line path forward. I think the wild card here is Fonnie Willis's investigation down in Georgia. There is some sense that she is interviewing her final witnesses. She, of course, has a special grand jury that's running the investigation. They will have to issue a report that would be presented to a regular grand jury before she could seek an investigation. There's a little bit of time involved there, but we don't know for certain who, if anyone, will go first here. I want to ask you about the Fulton County investigation shortly, but about that Mar-a-Lago case, there was a very important development this week. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals has set for next Tuesday, November 22nd, that's the date for oral arguments in the DOJ's challenge to a judge's appointment of a special master to oversee the documents seized from Mar-a-Lago. I mean, fundamentally, Joyce, the DOJ arguing never should have happened in the first place in front of Judge Aileen Cannon. What should our viewers expect to occur at that oral argument proceeding and immediately thereafter? So this will be a three-judge panel of 11th Circuit judges who will consider the propriety of Judge Cannon's uh, involvement in this case. DOJ has, of course, said this shouldn't be happening. We're entitled to conduct a criminal investigation without interference. 
And you can only imagine what the repercussions would be if, in criminal investigations, defendants widely had the ability to ask a judge to intervene and set up different rules that DOJ had to operate under. I think it's unlikely that the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals will want to see that happen to criminal investigations in, in the states that it covers, your state of Florida, Georgia, and my state of Alabama. And they've sent a very strong signal by setting oral argument just a couple of days before Thanksgiving. They're indicating that when they expedited this appeal, they meant business. Um, and it looks to me like they're trying to sneak in ahead of the deadline that Judge Deary has set, the special master in this case, that would call for a resolution of the issues that Judge Cannon sees jurisdiction over. The 11th Circuit may actually beat him to the punch here. You know, earlier I mentioned in the intro to your interview that the Washington Post has some reporting about the possibility of Attorney General Merrick Garland appointing a special counsel to oversee the Trump investigations. Do you think a special counsel would protect the integrity of these investigations into Trump and not allow, for example, a GOP House majority to be able to derail what is currently happening at the DOJ? Well, first, let's just say this. You will never be able to convince Trump's base, Trump's supporters in the House, that any investigation into his conduct is being conducted in a way that has integrity. Leaving that aside for a minute, it's clear that this is a Justice Department that has returned to a normal state of doing business. This is not a DOJ that's co-opted by Joe Biden. Merrick Garland has been very clear in saying that there's no consultation between DOJ and the White House on criminal cases. And that's as it should be. We are now months, possibly uh, uh, almost over a year at this point, into the DOJ investigation into January 6th, into Trump's involvement in the insurrection. And so we're past the point in time where you would need to have a special counsel. That's something that you might do early on in the investigation. But under the current rules as they exist for special counsels, High-level decisions ultimately are made by the attorney general, who supervises the special counsel. And so, while having a special counsel at this point would probably involve some needless delay, it would not do anything to separate the investigation itself from DOJ supervision. You know, to the extent that the thinking here was that Trump declares a candidacy and suddenly there's some magic need for a special counsel, that, I think, is, is very much a, a pipe dream on Trump's part. The way this DOJ operates, there is no conflict. They've even proven that they have the ability to continue an investigation into the president's own son, into Hunter Biden, who's being investigated by a holdover Trump U.S. attorney up in Delaware. No reason to believe that this DOJ can't continue to oversee an investigation into Trump as well. As mentioned a few minutes ago, I wanted to ask you about the Fulton County investigation that's being conducted by District Attorney Fonnie Willis. CNN is reporting that Fonnie Willis is now hitting roadblocks in her investigation into Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 election results there. They say she's now offering immunity to the fake electors she subpoenaed if they agree to testify before her special grand jury. I mean, Joyce, Fonnie Willis had intended by all reporting to wrap up her investigation by the end of this year, the end of 2022. That's maybe mm, five, six weeks away. Do you think maybe she overshot the runway a little bit by being as aggressive as she was with the investigation? Because, frankly, I think she could just go for the indictment now. I know this special grand jury does not issue the indictment itself, but I kind of feel like she doesn't need these fake electors in order to obtain an indictment of Donald Trump. We don't really know enough about this reporting to make sense of it. I think one thing we have to be cognizant of is that she might have more than just one target in this investigation. Donald Trump might not be her sole target, so it might be that she's trying to sort out the evidence with regards to other people. The key piece of evidence in this case has always been the audio tape of Donald Trump asking for favorable treatment, asking for the 11,780 votes that he would need to win Georgia. But there are important questions about his state of mind, the entirety of the conduct involving these um, slates of so-called special electors. And it may well be that she's got some issues with some of the details. I think that we'll know more when we see how she proceeds and whether she terminates her investigative grand jury or continues to work with them. 
Joyce Vance, my friend, as always, thank you for lending your insight and your brilliance to our show. It's always a pleasure to have you here. I appreciate you. Thanks, Katie.